So I think we've all had a pretty tough year this year. Me maybe more than anyone else. And there's one thing that's caused me more suffering, more pain, more agony than all others. And that's this knot. If you think a Turk's head is hard, you're wrong. Turk's head are easy compared to this star knot. I've tried this knot so many times, and I think it's turned out for me maybe three of 20 attempts. Probably more like two. Really only just this one. <laughs> and so we're gonna attempt this knot today for our tree topper. And if it turns out at all, we'll have another ornament for our tree. Let's dive in. For this abysmal paracord project, you'll need about five feet of any color paracord. We're using color yellow, so we can use it as a topper for our tree. About a foot of 16 gauge craft wire and a type three fit. So we'll set most of that aside for now and thread our fit onto the end of our cord. And then we'll take the other end and leave about a foot and a half before folding it over. And we'll take that short end, that foot and a half, and wrap it over the top, leaving a loop at the bottom, and then wrapping it around back to that side. And we'll bring the end down through that loop. This loop here, we wanna fold flat this way. Bring that end back around to this side, and down through this loop this time. And then same thing, fold that loop sideways this way, and bring your end back between your last and your first loops. So I'll move my fingers here so you can see what's going on so far, but you'll want to keep that between your fingers so that it doesn't come undone yet. Now moving back to our fit end, so that's coming out of the knot right here. We're gonna go through that first loop, underneath that short end of the cord, and through that second loop. And we'll be leaving just kind of a loop on that end as well. So now this is self-contained, it's not gonna fall apart, but it definitely looks like a jumbled mess. So we're gonna come back to the other side here, going over this first loop, over our standing end, and underneath that last loop. So now the first pass of our knot is complete, and now we're gonna be doubling it up. So this is a bit tricky. It's not quite like a Turk's head, where we want to follow the standing end the whole time. We're going to be following it most of the way, and then along the way we'll be crossing over it about five times. So to start out, we're going to be going down through the knot, right alongside this short end, to the right side of it, or to the inside. You want to go all the way through, and through this loop over here. And then we'll bring our cord back over the top, still following that right side, and down through this loop. And then this is where it gets tricky, because we're still going to be following the right side, but we have to put it through a loop first. So we're talking about this loop right here. Put our cord through the loop, so that we're still following the right side of this one. Bring that through the knot. Make sure you don't have any awkward twists in there before moving on. And then we're pretty much gonna repeat that pattern again. Because it's gonna come up through this hole. Go 
we're following alongside the right of this chord. Going down through this loop. Then as we bring it around, we want to go through that loop first so that we're still following the right side of this chord. Let's bring that all the way through. So now we're about halfway around our pentagon. You want to keep that pattern going, following the right side of this one now. Go back through the loop. Around. We want to go through this loop before continuing to follow the right side. Up through this one. Through these two. Once you do this a couple times, you'll notice how we're really just repeating ourselves but each time it can be tricky and it's easy to get lost in this knot. So here's our loop this time. Following through the knot. Up through this loop now. Back to this side. Make sure we're following the right side. And this is our last one. Going through the loop and coming out the bottom middle of the knot. So it should look somewhat even like this when you're done. Mine isn't a prime example. I like to flatten my knot out so that I can kind of see what's going on. So what's happening is that we've got our two rows right next to each other and we want them stacked on top of each other around the sides, but we want them right next to each other for the faces. We've kind of got these two halves to the knot, so it's often known as a butterfly knot. Now you might think we're close to done with this knot, but the hardest part is still coming. Tightening this knot down is a bear. Because our chords cross over each other, it's really easy for those cross points to get moved along. So what I mean is, when our chords cross and they go from the vertical back to the horizontal, that cross point can get moved where our loops are kind of crossing over at different points than they're supposed to. And if that happens, the knot ends up looking really uneven. So. I don't know if this will help you guys or not, but I like to keep my knot as flat as possible as I'm pulling the cords through, and that just helps eliminate the possibility of cords getting out of place. So I like to tighten down this knot in reverse order of how I tied it, and so since when we doubled up, we went to the inside of our previous cord, I like to tighten down that inside row first. Um, it kind of eliminates some of the jumble because if we tighten down the outside first, it kind of all caves in it on itself. So we'll take that longer end, the one with the fid, and just begin taking some of the slack out of it towards our shorter end. So there's no simple way to do this. You just have to find where you left off. So that's this cord here attached to our fid and begin pulling it through the knot. So just go loop by loop, take your time. The more passes you do on this knot, the better it's gonna turn out. What I like to do is tighten this knot down in reverse order of how I tied it. Since our second pass on this knot was to the inside, it's easiest if we tighten down that inside row first so that we don't close everything in on itself. So we'll begin by taking that side with the fid and just pulling the slack through the entire knot. The more passes we do on this, the better it's going to turn out in the end. And again, we just want to keep everything flat as we go to eliminate possibility of mistakes.
Here we are after three rounds of tightening, and I think that's as far as I'll go. It's pretty tight there. One of the difficulties of tightening this knot is that it's pretty hard to tell where a cord comes out of the knot. So if you're trying to tighten down a loop, it really helps if you can tug on it a little bit early on to see where it's coming out the other end. Because sometimes it looks like it lines up with another cord and it just doesn't. So let's move on to the last step in our star Christmas tree topper. So to finish this off, we'll first cut this end coming out the middle. It's pretty easy to hide that end. We'll just leave our typical eighth of an inch. And then run the lighter over it a little bit just to keep it from fraying. It doesn't have to look nice at this point. And then don't press it against. We want to take our fid and just push it into the center of the knot. And that'll hide that end entirely. This other end, we don't want to cut that off. We want to turn that into a way to keep this on our tree. So we'll make kind of a spiral with some of our craft wire inside. So take more wire than you think you would need. I'm going to take probably close to eight inches or so. It's always better to have too much than too little. So about like that. Maybe don't show this part. These wire cutters are worn out. Okay. And then you can, once you have that cut, you can clip your yellow cord coming out the bottom about the same length. We'll pull our inner strands out just a little bit so we can slide in this wire right alongside them. You just want to be careful that you don't snag anything too much or have it pop out the side of your cord. So just take that slow. Snagging on some things. Then once you reach your knot, my wire is about here, you just want to slide it up inside of the knot as much as you can, because it'll make our, our wire more stable. If you need to, you can just kind of bend a hook in the end to force that wire up into there. And I might just have to get that off camera. Sure. Once that's well secured, go down about half an inch or an inch and bend your wire sideways like this. We'll start our spiral from there. So just begin wrapping this around in a circle, moving away from the star. Maybe make it a little bit larger as you go. About like that. You can clip it whenever you run out of wire. I'm going to clip mine a little bit shorter, add a little bit too much wire. You want to clip it shorter than your cord. That way we can let the cord go over it. 
We want to pull our cord nice and tight, make sure that it's not bunched up along our wire anywhere. That'll keep it anchored inside of our star better. And then we'll clip our cord just beyond our wire. That way we can melt down the end and have our wire stay inside. And then we'll add it to our tree. If your star knot didn't turn out the first time, or maybe even your 10th time, don't give up. Most of mine still turn out like this, so it just takes a bit of practice to get them right. So while this version of the star knot was difficult, there's actually more difficult versions of this knot that have a lot more than five points, or they kind of weave back and forth in the middle. Those can all be found in the Ashley Book of Knots, so I'll put a link to that in the description, along with the numbers of those particular knots. Also put a link to the supplies used in this video. Thanks for watching guys, and we'll see you next time.